Welcome to the Militia Gaming Community. I'm Trigger Militia, and this video is all about the 2017 Pagani Huayra. Huayra. Let's go! The Militia Gaming Community and Dave Loves Games came together to create a community Discord. If you'd like to join the Discord, there's an invite link in the description down below. This is the best way to keep up on what's going on with both of our channels. So make sure you hit that invite link and we'll catch you over there. Real quick, I just want to say thank you to everyone who is supporting the channel. We just hit 16,000 subscribers and I'm super proud of what this channel has accomplished. And it's because of all of you guys. Everyone needs to go to the fridge right now and crack open an ice cold barks. And as always, you can hit me up on Instagram if you have any questions about this video or any video. I try to answer every single DM that comes my way, so don't hesitate to send me a message. Now let's take a look at this 2017 Pagani Huayra. If you're familiar with these build videos, go ahead and skip to around the 2 minute mark. If not, here's how these videos go. I buy each engine for the car and I test it on the day races Arian and Aardvark to find which engine is the fastest. During testing, I record the final race time and compare it to the other engines for the car. I only record the time if the race was super clean. I've raced over 400 times on these two courses, so I know them like the back of my hand. If I make a driving mistake, I instantly restart the race and throw that time out. Consistency and accuracy are my top two priorities, so after I find the fastest engine, I optimize it for each type of racing this game offers. Track, drag, drift, and dirt giving you four completely different builds to use for each type of racing in the game. I also have my personal top 20 for the two track courses so that we can compare the race times with the rest of the cars I've tested to see how each car stacks up in the grand scheme of things. The idea is to have some sort of foundation to rank these cars from fastest to slowest, but keep in mind this is my personal top 20 and it doesn't represent these cars fastest possible times. There are people out there running faster times using race shortcuts and different builds. The goal is to find the fastest engine for the car because that seems to be the biggest headache when building cars in this game. There are seven available engines for the Pagani, but there were two engines that performed above the rest. The 754 horsepower 6.0 liter V12 and the 542 horsepower 5.0 V8. They performed really, really well. The V12 was much better at Aardvark though, so I'm crowning it the best engine for the car. At Arian, it ran a 250.1, which is actually my third best time at Arian. Only the Beetle and the RSR ran faster times. At Aardvark, it ran a 427.6, which is again my third fastest time with only the Beetle and the RSR above it. Honestly, this car is insanely fast on the track. It has incredible times and it represents everything that you want in a car for track racing. Now the Beetle and the RSR obviously are a little bit faster but they I think are a little bit overpowered in this game. Now I've said in a previous video that I think the McLaren F1 is the fastest car next to the RSR but I'm beginning to reconsider. This Pagani is just as fast as the McLaren F1. Now after figuring out that the 754 horsepower 6.0 liter V12 was the fastest engine, I tested the race tires and I actually ran a slower time. Now I think the track tires do better for this particular car, even though the race tires do better for most of the other cars. Also, I noticed that with the 7 speed gearbox, 2nd and 3rd gear bang rev limiter really really hard, but it also does that in the 6 speed gearbox and the 5 speed gearbox. So I had to pick the gearbox that did it the least, and that was the 6-speed gearbox. So the final build looks like this. 754 horsepower V12, Ultimate plus parts, Ultimate dual turbo, and 5x3 pound NOS. I use a Super Track suspension, Elite brakes, Elite Track tires, Elite plus clutch, Super plus 6-speed gearbox, Super Track differential, and then I minimize the downforce and I went up two ticks on the steering sensitivity, but those live tuning settings are adjustable to your liking. I would suggest minimizing the downforce because it does help you with turns, but the steering sensitivity is completely up to you. All right, moving on to the drag category. Now, with most of my builds, the fastest engine is also the fastest drag engine, but in this car, it was a little bit different. To achieve the fastest quarter mile, I swapped to the 542 horsepower 5.0 liter V8. 
And this was the engine that I mentioned before was the second fastest engine on the track. On a quarter mile, I was able to get it down to 8.43 with this engine and with a zero to 60 of 1.83. This is the third fastest quarter mile of the cars that I've tested and the fifth fastest zero to 60 of the cars that I've tested. This Pagani is an absolute beast. So my full drag build looks like this. 542 horsepower 5.0 liter V8, ultimate plus parts, ultimate dual turbo, 1 by 15 pound NOS because that's standard for drag racing, super track suspension, elite brakes, elite track tires, elite plus clutch, elite 7 speed gearbox, and this was a change I went away from the 6 speed. The 7 speed offered a little bit faster quarter mile. I was able to shave 4 hundredths of a second off by switching to the 7 speed gearbox super track differential and then I minimize the downforce and the steering sensitivity is not really that important because you're just going straight for a quarter mile. It's an absolute monster on the drag strip. I would definitely recommend it. You can go up against almost any car in the game as long as you launch correctly. All right, moving on to drift. This was one of the most frustrating drift tests that I've done. It took me forever to find a combination of suspension, tire, and differential that allowed this car to be controlled. And then even once I found the right combination, it was insanely hard to figure out how to control the car. And the answer was really, really simple. I was having trouble switching from drifting left all the way over to drifting right. Transitioning, that was my issue. But I figured out that it's really simple with this car. If you just tap the handbrake in between slides and let the gas off, then smash the gas and turn to the other direction, it actually transitions really, really well. So with all of that said, even with the setup that I'm about to tell you, I still wasn't able to produce the type of scores that I could with other cars. And I don't know why that is because the setup I'm using is very similar to a lot of the other rear wheel drive cars but it just couldn't score as high. Now I could still three star some of the events, but it was a struggle and I had to be on my game. I really wouldn't recommend this car for drifting. There are a ton of different cars that do way better at drifting than this Pagani. So my full drift build looks like this. I use the 754 horsepower 6.0 liter V12, ultimate plus parts and ultimate dual turbo with a five by three pound NOS. I used super speed cross suspension, elite brakes, and elite drag tires, elite plus clutch, super plus six speed gearbox, and the pro drift differential. I had to minimize the downforce and maximize the steering sensitivity, and this was literally the closest thing I could get to a drift car. It really isn't that great, but it does the job and you can get three stars, but it's just very difficult to do that. All right, moving on to the last section, the dirt. The Pagani actually did pretty well in the dirt for not really being a dirt car. I was able to get my second fastest time on HTV2, but I did struggle a little bit on Rumble, and so that gave it a combined time of 508.8, which is sixth on my off-road list. The build looks like this. 754 horsepower 6.0 liter V12 engine, ultimate plus parts, ultimate dual turbo, five by three pound NOS, with the super rally suspension, elite brakes, elite off-road tires, elite plus clutch, super plus six speed gearbox, and the super rally differential with minimum downforce and up to on steering sensitivity, just like I did on the track. It's definitely an okay off-road car, which is really surprising considering it's a modern day supercar, but I would say that there are a couple of cars that are a lot faster than it, namely the MX-5 and the RSR. So to summarize everything that I've just said, the Pagani is amazing on the track. It's very, very good on the drag strip. It's not that great for drifting, and it's really okay for the dirt. I think you can beat a lot of cars on the dirt with this car, even though the car is not really meant for that type of racing. But definitely track racing all day long. This thing is insanely fast. It competes with the McLaren F1, the Ferrari F40, the Ford GT, the Beetle. I mean, it really does really well on the track. And I think with the correct driving skills, you can beat anyone with this car. Now, if you come up against a really good RSR racer, it's gonna be near impossible to win, but anything else, you definitely have a chance provided that 
you're not a terrible racer. All right, I really appreciate you guys watching this video. If you made it this far, you're an all-star. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions about this video or any video, you can always hit me up on Instagram, like I said earlier, or join the Discord, either way, but I'm on both, and I read every single message that comes my way, so don't hesitate to send me a message. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Trigger out.